I've been paid by the Bagwell government not to defend uh, Mr. Bagwell's presidential election. I take no position on whether he won the election or whether Mr. Watara won or who's right or who's wrong. I've been retained to try to resolve this crisis peacefully through dialogue and through mediation. And Mr. Babo did call for mediation and a renunciation of all violence, invited Mr. Watara to come to the table for dialogue, mm -hmm. which was my advice. And then last night, pertaining to your question about human rights violations, um, I advised Mr. Babo to make it absolutely clear that if there's any human rights violations or killings in his name or by forces loyal to him, he denounces and condemns them, calls for the prosecution of anybody doing that, just as would be the case in the North where there's lots of reports for violence, but apparently uh, the United Nations doesn't have observers on the but, ground there. Yeah. So to me, Let me what needs you, to occur here is dialogue and, and negotiation, not violence. I, I asked the representative and the spokesperson of the Watara government, the parallel government, I mean, this is really the winner that's been recognized by the international community of this uh, November 28th election, Alassane Ouattara, the U.S., the EU, uh, uh, the African Union, other international organizations. Why is Laurent Gbagbo still in power when everyone, even observers on the ground, have said he lost this election? Well, well, I, one of the reasons that I'm here is not to defend the position of the government, but to state what you just omitted, which is a very important set of facts that the international community has omitted even looking at. The Supreme Court of the Ivory Coast, which is the ultimate arbiter, just as the United States has a Supreme Court and France has a Supreme Court, looked at the evidence of massive fraud in the North, counted the votes, and found Mr. Babbo the winner. Now, I don't know whether that Supreme Court is right or not or inventing the evidence. What I do know is that the United Nations declared Mr. Watara the winner without reading that Supreme Court decision. This, and I yeah. would venture to say that you haven't read the Supreme Court decision. No, even though but we posted I do know one thing the, for sure. Let that me finish that my sentence. The Supreme Court is stacked with Bagbo supporters. Well, and if you issue, say the they're Supreme Court... They're the only ones who have actually come out in support of Bagbo as the winner so, of this so if, poll. So if you, are, if you are an advocate rather than an interviewer, I respect I'm that. I'm not but an you, advocate. I look at the facts me, coldly. I have absolutely no position. I, well, then if and you're, I look at who is come, has come out in support of do you Alassane want, Ouattara. Do you want me to talk on your program sure, or do you want to talk over me? All Go right. Ahead. You use the word stacked. I do not know whether you're right or wrong. I know there is a Supreme Court under the Constitution. Yet every news report that I've read anywhere describes the Independent Electoral Commission as dominated by Mr. Watara's opposition. Yet when you said the word stacked, you didn't say, but on the other hand, the commission that declared Mr. Watara the winner, that didn't cite evidence, which in the Supreme Court decision, which you haven't read, mm -hmm. the evidence was very specific about the fraud in the North, Yet you use the word stacked about the Supreme Court, yet you don't report that every news report describes the independent electoral commission that announced Mr. Watara the winner as very dominated and some say controlled by Mr. Watara. So as far as I'm concerned, I don't know who's right and I'm not here to defend Mr. Babo. I am here to say that we need to avoid bloodshed. Right. And the way to do that is to get both of them on CNN, I don't know why Mr. Watara didn't respond to the interview. I would urge Mr. Well, Babo. Well, neither did Mr. Bagbo. I would urge Mr. Babo to do the we same. We invited him and several he, times. But here's what he did do. The other night he mm -hmm. said, I want no more violence. I want to talk to Mr. Watara. I want to bring in a mediator like Mr. Mbeki. And maybe there'll be a peaceful way for there to be a decision here, not violence. And that's the only position I have, not to defend Mr. Babo, but to seek a peaceful, negotiated solution. Let me ask you this, because something that I read that you told a Salon.com interviewer is that you would actually drop this uh, client, your, the, the Laurent Bagbo government, if there was substantiated proof that atrocities were being committed in the name of the government with the support of uh, Mr. Bagbo. Uh, but uh, have you uh, read the UN findings that they have substantiated that arbitrary arrests have been committed, torture, uh, dozens of cases of torture, ill treatment, and enforced disappearances of people over the past one week? Does that I, I have, constitute proof? I'm just asking if no, you believe uh, does, in that. Does report. it constitute proof for you when you read a UN no, report? No, I'm, I'm asking you if it constitutes proof I, for I'm you. Not sure that what more would you need in order to be convinced uh, uh, that? I'm not sure who's doing the interviewing. I would be take very seriously that UN report. I'd like to, I've read it. I'd like to see the substantiation. I'd like to see who wrote it. I know that there have been UN reports concerning Israel that have been completely discredited as biased. I'd like to know who's writing the report. 
and I certainly take it very seriously if that report is true. Of course, I could not defend atrocities and human rights abuses. I would only say this, and I take the UN very seriously. I'm a big supporter of the UN. But when the UN observer on the day after the election pronounces the verdict of the election and doesn't even read the Supreme Court decision, you say stacked, the Supreme Court decision that very specifically cites fraud in the North, violence and intimidation. Reuters reported the European Union, the European Union mission, mm -hmm. protested to the Independent Electoral Commission, supposedly controlled by Mr. Katera, would not allow them to observe voting places in the North. If you're unaware of that Reuters report and the U European Union observers citing intimidation and violence in the North, the UN pronounced a verdict without being aware of or investigating those allegations. So if we're no, going to have a peaceful okay. solution, we need dialogue and we want to look at what the evidence is rather than jumping to conclusions. No, absolutely. And we're aware of the reports, of course. We're also, we're also aware of what the findings were in the end, which is what I was presenting to findings you. Findings by whom? Excuse me. You, can't, by the United, you cannot get away with that. By the, the United findings Nations, by the, United the European Nation. Union. Excuse me. You, mm -hmm. you cannot get away with that. If you're advocating, fine. If you're interviewing, you can't use the word findings without challenge. There were no findings They're of fact. They're not my words. They're the United Nations there, words. Well, then I will correct them. Okay. Excuse me. But you're there correcting the no, UN, not my words. That's all I'm saying. There were no findings. They never read the Supreme Court decision. They never verified whether there was fraud in the North. There were no findings other than pronouncing the verdict and saying that they saw no evidence of fraud. There has been evidence of fraud presented by one side. Perhaps Mr. Watara deserves to be named the winner. Let's look at the evidence and let's get to the negotiating table and maybe the ultimate outcome will be Mr. Watara is the president. But when you say findings, when they never were on the ground to investigate the fraud that was at least written down and cited in the supreme authority under the Ivorian constitution, a written decision, the UN never read that decision. In fact, my own government admitted that they hadn't read the decision. All right. At the very least, we're not going to end the violence. If 46% of the people voted for Mr. Babo and we want to end this violence, we have to find a solution that people can use dialogue and negotiation rather than violence and, as you mentioned, human rights violations if they're occurring. That's why a Mr. Mbeki or somebody who can mediate is the best answer to this uh, crisis. Okay, Lanny Davis, uh, an advisor to Mr. Bagbo's government, thanks very much for joining us uh, on Thank CNN. You. Thank you. Thank you.